It's early morning in Manchester. Preparations are taking place for the Passion, a live performance retelling the story of Jesus' life, death and resurrection. The volunteer crew and helpers are giving finishing touches to both stage and set. At midday, the audience is arriving. The warming up programme is about to begin. Ahead of the performance, Zahid Hussain speaks about public interest for the event and the attention given to it on social media. Tell us how you got involved with Manchester Passion. Well, I know Kenan Falakshir, he's a friend of mine, and he asked me to get involved. So I got involved with the fundraising and the social media. Yeah. Now, you, 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 you did a pretty good job. I mean, you reached tens of thousands of people and it, it went, went a bit wild. T can you tell us what happened? Well, we're still measuring it, so I suppose part of my role is to work out exactly how much we had in terms of reach. Yeah. So today's been really quite wild, so I guess it's going to take a couple of days just to measure. But I would say, yeah, it's in the tens of thousands, if not you know, half a million, something like that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. These crosses have been decorated by local children. Their artwork will be judged by Baroness Williams and Daphne Stewart Clark. Daphne Stewart Clark and Baroness Williams tell us about the Art Crosses competition. Okay, hi, I'm at the Manchester Passion Play 2017 and um, we are going to uh, start the play at two o'clock and we are going to have, um, uh, it's a comp this is a competition of crosses that various schools have been involved in um, which we're going to judge the three best crosses at 12 midday with Baroness Williams and I think they've all done an amazing job. If you look at the crosses all behind you, the schools that have been involved have been absolutely phenomenal. And uh, we're looking at very unusual, very special crosses, crosses that have got very good, great messages um, that are embellished with beautiful things. We're looking for very unusual, outstanding um, pieces and looking at to see if the children have understood the meaning of the cross, why Jesus died on the cross, and his death and his resurrection, what that was really all about. And so we're looking to see the depth of the messages in, in the crosses here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted this afternoon to be here with uh, Baroness um, Williams. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, Karis. And thank you so much for uh, coming here to judge the best cross, or the best three crosses. And it was a very difficult job because they're so wonderful. Aren't they? Absolutely I mean, gorgeous, yeah. Aren't they fantastic? I'm just amazed at the number of schools that have taken part. And, and a thousand crosses were made. And they were decorated, so it must have been difficult for you to choose the very best. It was very difficult to choose, but thankfully Daphne and I actually agreed on who the three winners were. And why did you choose the ones that you chose? Did it have anything to do with the messages that came across? Well, there was a combination of the artistry of the crosses, but also the messages. Um, particularly for one of the messages, where were, were the message was very, very strong about respect and you know Jesus dying on the cross for us and um, it, some of the messages really resonated with today in the world we live in and uh, which would you say is your favorite message of all the messages you've seen today well it was a lo there was a lovely one um, where two friends had de decorated the cross and one had put best friends forever about his friend and and his friend had done likewise and that's what it is it's about friendship and um, you know hate 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 will find a difficult space where friendships are strong Fantastic. I love that message too yeah. Baroness Williams thank you very much for joining us today thank you very much indeed later the winners of the competition are announced
production is supported by the Sweet Rhythm Big Band and the Trinity School Choir in the run-up to its start at 2pm. Warming up program leads up to the main play. The Kingdom of God. Bishop David Walker explains why he thinks the production is relevant to modern day life. How did it impact you personally? Uh, uh, obviously, I know the story very well, but it's always particularly encouraging if surprising to hear it in local accents to hear to hear the voice of Jesus as a Manchester voice and the, the voices of Liverpool and the Bolton and the North West coming together to m makes me realize this is about people like us it's not about people long ago and far away this really is the man who died and rose again for you and for me Jeff Millard, the author and creative director of the play, has added contemporary references to the script to address the challenges that people are facing today. What can you do for me, Jesus? Blessed are those who are persecuted in the cause of life. Well, that's definitely I feel persecuted wherever I go because of this headstone. And blessed are the gentle who stay on the head of the earth. Do you notice the politicians or the lawyers being gentle? Who wants to be gentle in this doggy dog kind of world? Nah. You've got to sell, sell, sell. Sell yourself. Sell your property. Sell your body. The cast, all volunteers, is drawn from different ethnic backgrounds, ages and walks of life. Not only does it include professional and amateur actors, but also a homeless person and a few asylum seekers. Canon Falek Sher talks about his personal experience with the Passion Play. What difference has this day and what difference has Jesus made today in your personal walk with him? I brought the community together. And that was the first positive thing, is the unity because all ethnic groups and I could see in the crowd, there were a mixed crowd, Christian, Muslims, Hindu, all sort of nationality and ethnicity was here. So that was the one positive thing we, we hear. And we presented Jesus as an icon of love, hope and faith for the homeless, for jobless, for immigrants and for the asylum seekers. And that's the picture of uh, Manchester, we call a Manconian society. The introduction to the play is followed by the recount of Jesus' last days on earth. One of 
you, each of you needs tonight, will be strength. Who is it? Is it me? No. Judas bargains with the Sanhedrin. As long as this Jesus is alive, there will be no peace in Israel. You can go, I say. Who are you? Who do you want? I heard you were looking for Jesus of Nazareth. They say you want to kill him. Who speaks such nonsense? Do not share some thoughts with him? Confide in him? Jesus tells the disciples that they're all going to abandon him. Tonight, all of you who desert me. The Lord will strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. No, even if all the others run away and desert me, I never run. Peter, Peter, before the cock crows three times tomorrow morning, you will deny even knowing. Rubbish, even if it means dying with you, I will never desert you. It is written that you will be sifted like wheat. <laughs> I have prayed that your faith will never cease. Give strength to your brothers. Father, everything is possible for you. Please, remove this cup of suffering from me. Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is betrayed by Judas and arrested. Take him away! Your day is gone, Caesar. Don't think I can't feel that there's something wrong. Supporting the passion with a breathtaking potpourri of contemporary gospel songs are the Manchester inspirational voices who won BBC Songs of Praise Gospel Choir 2016.
the Sanhedrin condemns Jesus to death and brings him before Pilate. I've always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. If you have something against me, bring some witnesses. How dare you talk to the high priest like that? Bring me the witnesses! Peter denies knowing Jesus three times. I told you, I don't know this Jesus fellow. Pilate may be convinced that Jesus is innocent, however, gives in to the pressure of the Jewish crowd and orders his crucifixion. They say you're dangerous, a madman, that you claim to be the son of God, that you are inspiring unrest among the population. What do you say? Seriously? I've had you follow and I know about you. When someone gets thousands of followers, I need to know what they're up to. And what am I up to? Nothing that I need to worry about. Are you not scared of me, Jesus? I have the power to put you to death. You have no power to give me life. What do you mean? You are alive. By whose power? Not yours. If my father didn't give it to you, you have no power at all. Are you trying to convert me, Jesus of Nazareth, to what? Enough. No more! Stop this nonsense. Either you're crazy or you're a god. Today is Passover, your special festival. And as always, I shall release one prisoner. Shall I release for you this King of the Jews? I bring Jesus out to tell you that I find no cause to charge him with anything. Ache homo. Look at the man. This 
this has nothing to do with me. This is your decision, your choice, not mine. His blood is not on my hands. Take him. Take him to be crucified. Bring to life Jesus Christ's last days on earth, the cast is rehearsed for the past few months. Emily Kay, who plays Rebecca, tells us how the play has impacted her. I know it sounds very um, like a standard kind of line, but watching Jesus be crucified was harrowing. Um, we've done it in rehearsals, we've done it hundreds of thousands of times, and but nothing quite beats it on the day watching him be flogged. Um, watching him watching him die on the cross it really puts into perspective what we're doing this show for and why it really means to be a christian Bishop David Walker talks about the moments in the play that have moved him the most. The scenes that were added to the biblical story following the sufferings of the three mothers of the three crucified men. The word uh, testimony is, is always wonderful. Is there any particular moment that, that you can testify that, that, that worked, for you, worked for you in this, in this play? Oh, it's one of the scenes that's not there in the scriptures. The three mothers of the three crucified men. I've never yeah. seen that uh, yeah. stage before. After, and just the, their feelings, their, their hopes, their fears, how distraught they are at that moment. Um, gives a real sense of, of, of the depth of the suffering that, the, that there was on the cross. It puts alongside the suffering of Mary and of Jesus and the, the, other, the others crucified and, and their mums too. How could it end like this? How could an innocent man be persecuted for speaking the truth? He spoke of love and reconciliation, but you have treated him with contempt and abandoned him. Words have no meaning now. Time has stood still. Without him, the sky pales to grey. The birds will sing no more. <laughs> On the third day after the crucifixion, the women come to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body and witness the risen Christ. Don't you see? He is not here. Jesus is risen! No. Why are you crying? Not yet. 
gone back up to my father. There will be so many who believe in me who will never see me. And they will all be blessed because of it. When a man believes in me, he does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. When he looks at me, he sees the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Go now, now it's into the world. At the end of the performance, the audience and organisers share about their experience. I think it had the most incredible power, didn't it? I think partly because it's not just a professional production by you know, a troupe who put it on every night. This is a people who come together and putting their all into this one performance. People who are really passionate about the passion, and that passion came across, the energy of the story. Now you've been involved in the planning, and um, for those people who don't know um, of this of this event, tell us a bit more what's impacted you the most about your involvement so far with Manchester Passion um, all, all the way up till today yes. I think the trust in God because sometimes be, because of lack of budget or uh, actor and actress we try to cancel a few months ago but after discussion with the committee we decided to put our trust in the hand of God and uh, we we believe God deliver it, not us. And that really impacted me to put my trust in the hand of God. Thank you. So to wrap up with, um, there's people watching us from all over, well, from, from home. What's one message you would, what's the message that you want to share with them? You've got prime time opportunity about how Manchester Passion can impact their lives. Yep. For this passion especially, we try to share the, some of the problems our city have, like uh, homeless, poor people, and asylum seekers. We, we try to include those in the message. Some of our actors, uh, they are uh, joining the group, they are asylum seekers or the real homeless, and we try to share the message of peace to this city uh, doesn't matter who you are, who you are and what background you have you are welcome in the heart of God in the sight of God every person are welcome and that's a, I think that's the true message of Easter and resurrection of Christ the opportunity for everyone now it's, it's been quite a hard journey uh, can, can you tell us a bit about it it was a very uh, hard journey because uh, there were so many issues financially, structure-wise, strong personalities, different ideas, we, we don't like this, we don't like this. There were times when we wanted to quit it for another year and we wanted to give more time, but then we prayed very, very hard and I had a good team who've been working and praying very, very hard. And I think we made it. And uh, apart from the difficulties, uh, God was on our side and he wanted us to glorify his name here in Manchester. And today we prayed for weather, the weather was good. Around 3,000 crowd came, dignitaries came, the cream of Manchester, like MPs, Lord Mayors, Bishops, and uh, three of my bishops from the diocese, they were all together, and archdeacons, and the councillors, and teachers, and scholars. 
and the community people were all here. So what else, what else uh, can I ask from God? I can only say thank you, Lord, for everything, and special thanks to Passion Trust and Alex for putting all this effort into this. What's wrong, Phil?